Hey guys, still here and welcome to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today I have a scenario and uh, it's going to be a pretty intense one by the looks of it, considering that I'm taking a battleship and a battle cruiser up against another battleship and 20 destroyers. So start the torpedo beats and get ready for some serious evasive maneuvers. The scenario from today was sent in by Pokedude3, one of my naval architects on Patreon. If you want to join those guys, links down below in the description. And achieving that rank, or uh, let's say supporting me on Patreon and getting that rank, means that you have a far, far greater scenario chance, or at least chance to get your scenario featured. He has a hell of a backstory, so here we go. It is 1941. France fell, the evacuation of Dunkirk had passed, the Führer engaged the Blitz, and his general staff get him to not bomb the civilians after a mild raid on Britain. The Blitz tears through the military outposts and bases, setting the path for Operation Sea Lion, an all-out invasion of the UK. Erwin Rommel, after expecting, inspecting the French naval defences, deems them inadequate and orders more resources and workers, thus improving its might. Operation Sea Lion was launched and the Kriegsmarine with the army crushed the British. The United Kingdom surrenders. The US, having already dealt a deadly blow to the Japanese, now recognize the European threat one that is still allied with the Soviets. The Kriegsmarine, exhausted but still fully operational, goes into defensive positions along the Atlantic. The US sends its Pacific fleet to the Atlantic, but they're intercepted and bombarded with torpedoes. The ships, now damaged, still head for the Kriegsmarine, but they're no match. They're wiped out. Truman, having seen what had happened, wanted to surrender to the Germans, but Eisenhower and Congress voted against it. In a desperate attempt, they infiltrate the German communications with spies. One manages to get into the communications of the new G-Class being built. The G-Class, ships bigger than the H-Class, were destined to always be aircraft carriers and battleships. Unbeknown, sorry, no, beknownst, not unbeknownst, beknownst to the US, the Germans were building a G-Class battleship, but halted production so that they could adapt the ship's weaponry to the ships that the US will build. One spy takes advantage of this and fi fakes a final report from German recon, and the spy reports that um, there will be four battleships, five battle cruisers, one light cruiser, and two destroyers. The general staff, this is the German general staff, um, not doubting the report, order the continuation of the G-Class with weaponry adapted to shoot mainly heavily armored targets with minimum amount of secondary guns. The enemy fleet consists of 20 destroyers, assisted by one repaired Iowa class. You are assisted by one battlecruiser. So my um, situation here is that I have to build a basically a super heavy battleship that is designed to fight other battleships, or at least battleships and battlecruisers. So seriously large firepower, but not a lot of firepower when it comes to dealing with secondary ships. So we're probably going to have to get lucky about 20 times in order to get rid of all those destroyers by hitting them, well, probably once with a 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20 inch shell. Now, um, the US get one enemy battleship, or get one battleship. It's not quite going to be in Iowa because I can't design it and the AI will, so it could be anything, but at least it's 1940 tech. Starting range is 15,000 meters. This means that it is quite likely that the moment that I enter the battle, I'll already start receiving torpedoes. Right, a ship that's capable of dealing with serious battleships. Um, no real attention is to be paid to stuff that looks like a small ship, destroyers, light cruisers. Uh, maybe even heavy cruisers at that point could be considered as relatively small. I mean, I'm displacing 130,000 tons. It is not unreasonable to think that um, a small ship, like a, well, a heavy cruiser at 15, 20, 30,000 tons, is actually relatively small. Now, um, I'm going to go through the build process a bit faster, and this has to do with... Um, well, with me putting out a poll, what is a decent time for a video? Like, what's a decent length? And YouTube stats told me it's about 14 minutes. At least that's how much people on average watch. Um, the latest video that I put up prior to this one had, what was it? I think 
125, no, not 125 minutes. Um, it was about 90 minutes or just shy of it. So that means that, um, well, it is actually way, way, way too long. And I'm going to try and make these things a bit shorter. Not that I'm going to try and completely rush through it, but getting an Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts video to be as the poll or as the, the answers for the poll suggested between 15 and 30 minutes. <laughs> That's challenging, uh, if not outright impossible. Now, I would like to start using the 20 inches again. This is a ship that can perfectly handle those. And you know what? We're going to design something a bit silly. Main guns, side guns, 20 inch, triple barrel. Could those fit side by side? Oh, come on. I know they're fat turrets, but we should be able to find a place for them. No, they're just just too big. What if I move the entire superstructure back? No, I can't. Because that funnel is required to get my engine efficiency up. If I don't have that, I can shift it back. And then maybe they want to sit side by side. Now, as to uh, come back to the issue, it's not like I'm going to get rid of the design phase because I know that a lot of you really enjoy the design phase. So I'm uh, definitely going to keep that in. But I might try and get rid of some of the less interesting portions of the, the video. Less interesting portions of a battle. Centerline guns, 20 triple... There. After weight of sets, pretty significant. Um, come to think of it, this looks nice. It only really means that I have a lot of firepower when facing forward. So that's not ideal. And considering that I could put these on a barbette, I'd probably build uh, a barbette and then a quadruple turret. Yeah, that might actually make more sense. Because then I just bring a lot more firepower to bear on the enemy. So we're going to need the enormous barbette. Centerline gun, 20, quad, boom, boom. We are designed to deal with serious shipping anyway. So we're going to need this. We have a bit of an aft weight offset issue. But I can still shift this farther forward. Bring the barbette farther forward. And maybe put the superstructure a bit farther forward. And then I do want another centerline gun. I don't think it's going to be 20 inch because they won't fit. But what could we fit on here? An 18 inch. Just look at how relatively small an 18 inch gun looks. That's an 18 inch gun. Compared to that 20 inch monster in front of it. It almost looks like a 16 or a 15. Damn. Now I still want to have some upgrades here. Um, let's go for advanced hydraulic turrets. High TNT. I know the ship is way, way, way too heavy. So I might eventually... Yeah, there we go. I'm going to have to go back to geared steam turbines anyway. Uh, let's kick out the range. And there we go. Now I still have some displacement left. Can we put another 18-incher on the stern? No, it's 4,400 tons. Uh, it's too heavy. Bring this thing in forward. A bit less. 0 0.7, 0 0.4. 0 0.4 might be fixable. If I just put this one slightly farther back. There we go. Now, I think I have a decent ship. I have 12 20 inch barrels, which seem to have relatively good freedom of mobility. I can do 30 knots. I can deliver these shells every 73 seconds with the 18 inch shells every 52 seconds. I carry 300 ammo here per turret, that is 360 here. So I have more than enough when it comes to shells. The issue is, um, I'm gonna need to kill 20 destroyers. Now it says um, you must build a ship primarily designed to fight heavily armored and armed ships. Keep lightly armored ships out of your mind. So this means that I really don't get to add any kind of a secondary. Although, no. 
An 8-inch gun wouldn't do that much against a destroyer, or well, it would do a lot against a destroyer, but not against a battlecruiser or a battleship. So I suppose that we're going to have to go with something like this. But I'm going to change a bit on the armament because I really would like to have another 18 triple here on that barbette. And then I want to have centerline 20s here and here. And another centerline 20 over there. I'm picking a centerline triple because that way all the ammunition gets shared. And that's something that I really find quite important. That won't fit. Okay, bring the forward, or bring the, the secondary tower forward. Bring this gun a bit closer in. Two and a half. That one farther out. 0.7. One. Point 0.3. Now, considering that this ship is not really designed to deal with underwater threats, like torpedoes, because that's probably going to be handled by different ships, I'm only going to give it a Hydrophone 3 station, but that's it. I don't believe that that's going to cause too much of support. It's going to give me some warning, but I still have a 1,079 meter turning circle. So this thing really does not want to turn. Fortunately, I can put some better auxiliary engines on it and combine that with anti-flood, anti-torp, four. Well, let's go with anti-torp three and put some more armor on because this thing is supposed to go up against bigger and better threats, battleships. Bit more, well, not deck extended really, but maybe some deck armor here. Seven and a half. Fill it out with the conning tower. We get to 13? Yeah, just about. 12, uh, sorry, 129,997 out of 130,000. Turret armor 15 inch, bonus 118%. The turrets turn relatively quick. They have heavy shells, boosted by an improved, range ra improved radar rangefinder and stereoscopic 5. This is how I would design a ship that's going to go up against enemy battleships. Uh, whether it's going to be any good against 20 destroyers, well, we're about to find out. The Württemberg. Alright, time for the battle to commence. The Württemberg is ready to fire, and immediately as I started the battle, opened up against some of... I'm not even sure what. Uh, I think... Oh, it's, it's up, uh, opening up against the battleship. Um, the destroyers are already coming my way. I had to restart the battle a few times in order to get rid of this result, but this means that I don't really have a lot of time to react. Fortunately, at least Württemberg is heading away, and I'm going to make sure that that continues to happen, but at a mere 24 knots, so I can still get some accuracy. The battlecruiser is going to have to carry a lot of weight when it comes to dealing with these small ships. She carries 14-inch guns, 7-inch secondaries, a decent number with a probably good firing arc, um, a couple of 4-inch guns and a mere 2-gun, which is somewhere hidden behind that turret. Bulkheads, maximum. Turning circle, 744. With a sonar 2, generation 1 radar. Uh, she has Citadel 5, anti-flood 3, that's going to come in handy. Even some improved auxiliary engine. Yeah, I can make the ship work. Alright, you're going to turn to port. Oh, sorry, starboard. And we are going to try and squash these little ships as quickly as possible. Now the Württemberg has already achieved 27% accuracy because the battleship is really not that far away. I don't really care about the battleship. I think this one's going to be pretty easy to sink. All those DDs? Well, it's either going to be a turkey shoot or a really frustrating performance because there are so many of them. Ooh, look at that. That just bounced off the first salvo. I know that these are supposed to be Iowas, uh, but as I mentioned, the game doesn't design Iowas because I tell them to. Because I cannot tell them to, I can only tell them that they have a battleship. And this thing went with eight 18-inch main guns. A bunch of sevens, uh, a whole lot of 4-inch, 3-inch, and 2-inch. And she is ricocheting all of my shells. That is impressive. We're going to switch to high explosive. Never mind, we're not going to switch to high explosive. Because that was one of my 20 inch shells that did a chunk of damage to that ship. Now this is what the ships are designed for. The Württemberg especially is designed to deal with big ships. 
So the battleship, easy. The DDs, <laughs> different deal. What? What? Oh. Uh, sorry about that. I didn't mean to kill you yet. I think one of them got hit by a stray 14 inch shell and immediately sunk. So that's actually quite useful. Because it means that those DDs might not have a lot of bulkheads, or I ripped them open so violently with those 14 inch guns that they very swiftly died. It looks like this guy is not really putting up that much of a fight. No, we got shells splashing every which way. I'm even going broadside with the battleship, with the Württemberg. Let's look at that salvo. 20 inch shells flying out to meet the battleship. Some return fire. I hope that the 12 inch belt's going to be stopping that, but I think it won't. Because it's probably a bit too big. Oh, there goes another DD. That one almost got killed off thanks to, I think, some 14-inch again. And once again, it's a shell type that should be decent against both ships, but wasn't actually aimed at the destroyer. The destroyer sort of just happened to be in the way. <laughs> like that. So we're just shelling these these, well, not these, this battleship here, and actually, well, almost mistakenly doing damage against the destroyer. Damage to the secondary tower and fire. Has she done any damage? No. The only shot that has hit me was a 7-inch shell. Interesting. Now, normally, I would charge pretty much towards the enemy, uh, this time around, I'm not that eager to engage them at a range of, let's say, 5 kilometers, which is my preferred engagement range. Because they have a lot of torpedo capability. Or at least, with 20 destroyers, you'd think that they have that. They carry one... Is that a Quinn? Or a Quad? Can you pause for a second? Quinn. That's 5 torpedo launchers. Quintuple launcher. And an unknown torpedo type as of right now. So I'm going to get a notification soon. And we'll be able to tell what that thing is. This battleship in the meanwhile is not having a good time. It's already down to half structural integrity. And has really not been able to do... Well, anything against me. One 18 inch shell has found its mark. And in the meanwhile, Oregon, standard complement of bulkheads, she is really taking a beating. 45% structural, buoyancy down to 79%. I suppose they can come back from that. Anti-flood 3, AUX 2, yeah, they can come back from that. It's not a bad design, this ship. I quite like it. A couple of those 18s. Uh, one seven, some more sevens on the stern, dealing with anything that's relatively small. A whole bunch of four inch, three inch, and two inch. This is something that I could probably design, it's just that I don't use quad turrets that often. Now, let's see how quickly we can put that guy down, so that the smaller ships can start getting killed off as well. These DDs only have a range of 10.4. So as long as I stay out of that range, and as long as they don't um, do anything but sail towards me, like they're doing right now, they can't launch, at least not quite, they shouldn't be that much of a threat. Now I'm going to have the battle cruiser start to engage threats as the destroyers, and hopefully it'll be able to do some damage against it. One 14 inch shell should be enough. And I'm hoping that the 7s and 4s are going to carry me through this destroyer fight. Because while 120 inch shell is enough, they reload very, very slowly. Another flooding. And another one. This poor battleship. Another fire. How accurate are you? 23%. Another flooding. Jesus. The Württemberg is just butchering that battleship. More floodings. 
Structural integrity is down to 27%. Oh, the 18 inch guns <laughs> have decided to take out a destroyer. Probably the Allen here. That thing is going to get destroyed inside of 20 minutes, probably. DD is now getting the full attention of the battle cruiser and its secondaries. She did, however, just torpedo the battleship. So it's time to start maneuvering. Let's get the Leipzig to turn a bit more. Come on, one good 14 inch hit on the Allen, and she's probably toast. Minimum bulkheads on these things, as I kind of suspected. Oh, that's the Allen right there. Torpedoes have been detected by Leipzig. Now, these torpedoes are relatively quick. No, they're very quick. 63 and a half knots. Which means that Leipzig can pretty easily dance out of the way. But the challenge is to get the Württemberg out of the way. Carry on. Oregon gets hit three more times in a row. 318, so that's an entire full 18 inch salvo that she took. She's down to 3%. Buoyancy is, f well, faltering. 1%. Good lord, that thing is. Look at those holes. That is some serious battle damage. And she has done 140 damage. Three hits on her 18 inch guns. Why did she perform so poorly? Stereoscopic 5 radar, no, rangefinders, generation 2 rangefinder, lidite explosives, so if she hits, she can do a lot of damage. 1575. And loader system? Um, auto reloaders. So they reload in 55 seconds, she just didn't get a lot of opportunity to actually use them. That's how quickly she got killed off. There she goes. Oregon is dead. Württemberg, already flooding, is about to get flooded a bit worse as she's going to eat two torpedoes. Now the hunt begins against the destroyers. So it is time to load... For fuck's sake. It is time to load the high explosive. No, said the whole game. No, you're not. <laughs> and proceeded to blow off the main turret. <laughs> oh, yeah. Engine 2 damage, main gun destroyed, barbette destroyed, ship is on fire, rudder damage, flash fire. Good night. But that was that one hit torpedo that hit me underneath the, I think, the B turret here. Except that. I believe the torpedoes pretty much struck me amidships. How did this happen? Torpedo mid belt, 127 and 165. And that damaged the engine. Six seconds later, the main gun got destroyed. Hold on. How did that happen? Because normally, you get a torpedo impact or a shell impact and immediately the thing gets blown up. But now it took six seconds. It's like something happened between 1818 when the ship got hit and 1825 that caused a massive amount of damage to, well, the ammunition, I guess. The main gun. What exactly happened? I don't know, but uh, damn. There goes my 130,000 ton beauty of a ship. That was able to output a lot of damage inside of 20 minutes. Not even that. Sink an American battleship. Um, and proceed to get torpedoed. By... Well, it was the Allen. I know that much. Uh, but what size of the torpedoes are these? 24 inch. Okay, so they're the biggest torpedoes that the game can give you. Right. So, that's um, a mission failed. <laughs> One torpedo. Well, two. Okay, two. But one, I think, was the actual culprit. Anyway, um, that's going to conclude this video, because while I can have the Leipzig butcher all the destroyers, the missions failed.
this is not quite how I expected to get to shorter Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts videos, but um, I'll take it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you soon for the next one.